Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth and adore him. Open your mouth and acknowledge him. Open your mouth. Come on. Open your mouth. Give him glory. Give him glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. Uh -uh, we can do better than that. Praise the name of the Lord. How many of you are expectant tonight and you believe that God is set to do something mighty, marvelous, and miraculous in your life? Support the waving of your hands with a shout of praise to Him. As an attestation of what you know He will do. Are we set tonight? Are we set tonight? The first prayer tonight is a prayer of thanksgiving. You're not thanking him for what he has done any longer. You are thanking him for what he's about to do. Can you lift your voice in one minute and thank him? Open your mouth and just bless him. I said open your mouth. Raise a prayer of thanksgiving to him. Say Lord thank you for the miracles that I'm about to see in my life. Make sure you are louder than your neighbor. Thank you for the testimonies that are about to spring out of my life. Thank you for your power that is about to be demonstrated. Thank you because I know that you are visiting me, visiting my finances, visiting my family, visiting my life. Come on, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Open your mouth and thank Him. The Bible says, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry. And He said, I will glorify them and they shall not be small. I will multiply them and they shall not be few. Open your mouth in 60 seconds and give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Now, before we go ahead with the meeting tonight, I want you to realize this one thing. This is not, I'm not telling you because I want you to say amen. I'm telling you because I know that is what God will do. No one will leave this place without a testimony. Listen, oh my God, I feel the anointing as I'm saying it now. I feel the anointing so, I don't know what, I don't know what is so special about this miracle service, but from Friday, there's been a strong release of the anointing upon me. I could feel it. This is not the service where you come just to watch other people take their testimonies and go. This is a service where the first set of people God will visit tonight are those who came to watch. Did you hear what I said? I thought you would shout an amen to that. You know, there are all kinds of people who come to church. Some just come. Let's just see this man of God, how powerful he is. I'm saying the first people to be hit by the power of God are those ones. Come on, your amen can be better than that. Listen, listen. 
every day in a man's life must not be the same every day should come with it with uniqueness and i tell you one thing about this miracle service something is about to happen in your life that will change the course of your history and alter your life forever i said something supernatural is about to happen for you something that will bring a lasting and an eternal change in your life from today in the name of jesus are we ready tonight listen i want you to believe god believe god as i'm standing here I don't, i'm not only believing god for you or those online i'm believing god for even myself i want to know why there's such an investment of the power of god because i can feel it so strong tonight there is going to be breakthroughs tonight there is going to be breakthroughs i'm telling you there's going to be a strange release of the ministry of angels in this place i'm telling you the testimonies that will break out of this meeting is something that in the next four sundays we will still have people coming back to share share their testimony of that which god has done for them in their life if you know you are the one i want you to shout a bigger amen come on you can shout it louder than your neighbor you can shout it louder than the person next to you clap your hands and give god a praise in this place hallelujah lift your hands let's just worship the lord before we sit down tonight is going to be a mighty a mighty visitation of his presence i want your heart to be open i want your faith to be alive tonight insist that god will do something to bring an end to the cycle of misfortunes the cycle of failures insist that god will do something to break the band of delay from your life Wave your hands and give him praise. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Lift those hands to him.
His presence is here tonight. Mighty Lord, oh, great in Jehovah. At Toby, we love you, Jesus. Truly, there is none like you. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your presence in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Just lift your hands to him. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Thank you, Father. Now listen. Don't sing, just lift your hands. There are a few people God wants to touch before we even start the service. There are a few people that the hand of God will come mightily upon. It's something you can't resist. It's going to be very powerful. And that's the energy that will shift you to your next level. It, it will happen while I'm singing right now. Just lift your hands and let me sing. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. That's it. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Receive the touch of His presence. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Father, touch them right now. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father, that's the anointing of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome Me potent Father of mercy and grace Thou art welcome Now just be still everywhere. Just be still. Just be still everywhere. Shh. Ushers, help me. Ushers, help me, please. I need quietness. I need quietness now. Just try to hush them. I know there is such a power here, but just try to hush them. There's something God wants to do. 
Be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Lift your hands and close your eyes. There are seven people that the hand of God will come upon now. I see the angel of the Lord touch seven people right now. It will be mighty. Ushers, please stay at the light. Eyes closed everywhere. Just seven. There's an anointing coming upon them for the next level. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. Father, thank you. Write your symbols for me. Father, thank you. There are seven. There are seven. There are seven. There are seven. There are se- Help that lady at the back here. Help her. Help them. There are seven. There are seven. That anointing shifts you to the next level. That anointing breaks every barrier around you. Shifts you to the next level. Of mercy and grace, thou art welcome. Hey, la masca pranda kaba isko paleta rudia. There's somebody here. This this place. There's somebody an angel will touch. I can feel it on my right hand. There's somebody that an angel will touch here on this place. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Touch. Oh Lord. So something new in my life. God will do things tonight, oh. God will do things, things, things. There is power available to shift you to your next level. There is power available for your next level. He told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 2, He said, you have dwelt on this mountain too long. There are people here present and following online. You have been on one spot for too long. I say this by the God of heaven. The power of God is about to catapult you to your next level. I said the power of God is about to catapult you to your next level. Something new in my life. Father, I'm asking you tonight that you walk in miracles and signs and wonders in this place I thank you because your presence is here and Lord I prayed one prayer to you today before I came that everyone will live with a miracle two years ago you told me that every month we should have miracle services so that you can visit your people and bring their, an end to their predicament and Lord, every of those services you have proven yourself. I ask you by my covenant with you, prove yourself tonight. Even those that have no business with a miracle, may they live with multiple miracles. May everybody live with a tangible experience of your power, of your presence, and of your glory. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Please take your beautiful seat. God bless you. In your presence there is life. Expression of your love. And revelation of your power and might. Your presence I can bring 
my love song of in the presence of just bring the two ladies that will come under the anointing I'm, I'm hearing a very loud shout there are two of them there are two of them that will come under the anointing now two ladies I'm hearing a very loud shout and that is a sign of a visitation coming to seven families here when it happens just bring them out and I need to just lay my hands on them but this is the sign God is just giving me right now there are two a very loud shout I think it will happen around one will happen around this place Spirit of God move in this place right now move in this place right now this is the time to write your symbols move in this place they are just two I can feel it now I feel the anointing and one around this place and the Lord is visiting by that sign seven families that's what the Lord is saying that's why bring them for me I need to lay my hands on them in your presence I can breathe my love so lovely in the presence of there's such an anointing in this place and I prophesy a visitation for seven families right now. I prophesy a visitation. God is about to turn your life around. God is about to turn your life around. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Second Samuel chapter 5. I welcome you to May Miracle Service and I trust the Lord to have His way tonight in Jesus' name. For those of you that are coming for the first time, I want to welcome you. And in case you are not familiar with these kinds of services, this is what we call the Ministry of the Spirit. So please just bear with us. A lot of it will happen all through the meeting till the end. There are people here that your miracle tonight is a shift. In your spiritual life a shift a different mantles that will fall in this place tonight the name of the Lord be praised in Jesus name second Samuel chapter 5 verse 18 to 20 for you are glorious and worthy to be praised the land upon the throne and now to you we lift our voice in praise the land upon you see when you see me sing like this it's because of the activity of the spirit that is happening every song sung is an invitation of his presence into this place every song sung is a procession that goes before the move of the spirit of god in this service by time there are mighty angelic manifestations happening here To you we lift our voice to save the land. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our voice in worship as we bless your holy name. you deserve the glory the honor
lift our voice in worship as we bless your holy name. You are great. You the miracle so great. There is no one else like you. There is no Father, thank you for what you will do tonight. I just feel a mighty, mighty, mighty weight of the presence of God in this place. This is why I know that there will be miracles. Because the Bible says in his presence is the fullness of joy. And Jesus told the disciples, he said, ask and receive. So that in receiving, your joy will be full. So if in the presence of God is fullness of joy, it means that it is because of the miracles that his children will receive in his presence. That's the reason why their joy will be full. It's one thing to have joy, it's another thing for your joy to be full. And I feel the anointing of his presence so strong. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me start with you. You are the first person I'll prophesy to today. Where's the mic? You, the drummer. Sit, yeah, just where you can stand, sit down, whatever. You are the first person I'll prophesy to tonight. Are you ready? This is just a question. Is there something wrong with your account? Like your bank account? Yes, sir. There's something wrong, like you need to fix. Yes, sir. All right, let me tell you this, and you don't need to believe it. This is first of May, right? Yes, sir. Before thirty-first of this month, God will blow your mind by a superior financial miracle. You don't need to believe it, okay? Because the angel to perform it is here. All right, and in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands to you. The grace that empowers for such dimensions of miracles rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus. From now till 31st, before 31st of May, you watch what will happen. This is not about your sacrifice or your sowing or your prayer. It's just the favor of God that is about to work for you. What you have never seen in your life will happen this month. In the name of Jesus. 2 Samuel 5 verse 18 to 20 Prayers that command supernatural breakthrough Write that down as a topic tonight Let's just look at the word of God briefly and then we'll pray From verse 18 The Philistines also Give me from verse um, 16 Let's do from verse 16 down I think it captures Okay 17 it captures everything I, I did us to get here. Now when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. The Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. Verse 20. So David went to Baal Perazim, and David defeated them there. And he said, The Lord has broken through my enemies before me, like a breakthrough of what? Water. Therefore he called the name of that place Bel Perazim. I prophesied to 21 people here. May the God of all breakthroughs show up for you this month. In the name of Jesus Christ. He called the name of that place Bel Perazim. It means the Lord of breakthroughs or the master of breakthroughs. 
some of you that's what you need you need a breakthrough there will always be a time in life where a man will be desperately in need of a breakthrough what is a breakthrough you need a breakthrough when you are being resisted by certain forces either resisting your advancement into the next level or resisting a particular release of divine supply into your life there is need for breakthrough when you encounter resistance are we together and that was what and i tell you the truth at every point in life there will be a season where what you need is a breakthrough it feels like the miracle is about to break forth but it continues to linger at that point you need a force you need a superior power to rise on your behalf and bring by force that's why the bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take at it how by force in the niv translation it says the kingdom of god is forcefully advancing that means to advance in life is by force the first law of newton law of motion isn't it it says a body is at rest isn't it until an external force acts on it that object has the ability and the capacity to move but it will remain there in that one spot in that one position until a force that is stronger than it acts on it and not only does the force act on it the force also acts on the resistant force i think there's something like that in physics that means to advance in this life is not natural if anybody moved from one level to another there was a force that was applied and i tell you the truth in life you will always have a need there will be a season where what you need is a breakthrough sometimes you feel like the miracle is here but it's not manifesting sometimes the people that will help you have even called you and everything is set but for it to materialize at that time what you need is a breakthrough and may god give somebody a breakthrough this afternoon in the name of jesus christ the bible spoke of david here the bible says in second samuel the moment he was anointed king what happened you would have thought the next thing would be they'll throw a feast or they throw a party the bible says the next thing that happened was that the philistines gathered themselves against him that's why it is truly said that for every level there is a what devil he was just anointed the third time king over israel and that's when the greatest enemies of israel arose you know one of the only enemies that saul could not conquer one of the only enemies or enemy nation of israel that saul could not conquer was the philistine nation in fact they were the ones that killed him so david had risen to a level in life where he was coming against forces that were stronger than his predecessors like some of us here under the sound of my voice and online following you have gotten to a point where what is resisting you was what conquered and defeated your father conquered and defeated your mother or your or, or your ancestors before you it could be delay it could be lack it could be anything whatsoever but david was a wise king the bible says as soon as he heard that they had gathered themselves against him he went to the stronghold that stronghold was called adolam in, in first samuel chapter 22 that was the place david escaped into when he was running from king saul he escaped into that cave adolam now because the cave was in the valley physically speaking david had already entrapped himself for the philistines i want you to get this picture adolam was a place in the southern part of judah that place the southern part of judah was filled with valleys are we together so david escaping to a cave was like he just brought himself it was almost like he submitted himself to the enemy it became easy for them to surround that cave and catch him but the bible didn't call it a cave this time around the bible called it a stronghold the first time david entered there it was called a cave but something had happened between david and god there and that place became a stronghold there are times in life when you are combating or you are up against forces that are greater than you 
some of you have dealt with witches and demons you are now coming against principalities what is resisting you now is a prince you know i told somebody i said we can wrestle demons but we don't sorry we can cast out demons but we don't cast out principalities we wrestle them i've been confronted by a principality twice i know what i'm telling you in fact you cannot rise to a place of territorial influence in any field if you have not fought battles and won principalities those are the kind of forces that you'll be praying and shouting jesus and they'll be looking at you you know the bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against what principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness i don't have time maybe when we start the series on warfare spiritual warfare maybe in june or july i'm going to talk to you about these four dimensions or these four ranks of demonic forces of satanic forces a principality is a prince a satanic prince over a territory he governs that territory he enslaves that territory and when you will rise to a place of territorial dominance if you don't fraternize with the powers that support that principality they'll be up against you and i tell you the truth in this city <laughs> brothers and sisters the principalities here are strong are you hearing what i'm telling you i'm not just telling you stories i have met with them But because you are connected to this house you are already an overcomer are you hearing me uh-huh even the principalities they know the bible says david went into the stronghold there will be times where you need to go into your stronghold and pray certain kinds of prayers the prayer that david prayed was to ask the lord shall i pursue them these are the guys that slaughtered king saul remember that david became a soldier under king saul saul had been a warrior in fact the bible said physically he had a greater stature the bible says shoulder upwards he was taller than all the men of israel saul in his respect was a giant david trained under him david became a warrior under him but these were the guys that defeated and killed saul so david knew he was not up against something small and i tell you eh, you know that you are ready for greatness or you know you are ready for abundance when at that point in your life you are confronted by extremely strong forces every time you are in a season of your life where it looks like hell has broken loose that is just the eve to a mega breakthrough i'm telling you every time the battle seems extremely fierce and tough then know that your night is about to turn today. David prayed to God and the Lord told him, Pursue, for I will give them to you. I want to teach you tonight four prayers to pray that will command supernatural breakthrough for you every time. Some of you, this is your miracle this, this, this evening, no? some of you. If you get this knowledge and apply it anytime you need a supernatural breakthrough pray one of these prayers how many of you would like to know these prayers every i don't know about you but i know that there is a, every christian wants to know that when they call upon god he will answer isn't it this life is full of questions so what we are looking for is answers isn't it that's the truth there are prayers, certain prayers that command supernatural breakthrough. You remember the Bible told us in Acts chapter 12 about, the, about Peter when he was arrested. And in verse 5, the Bible says prayers were made by the church. The Bible didn't say prayers were prayed. It didn't say they said prayers. It said prayers was made. This was another dimension of prayer. And because of that an angel appeared the night to peter's execution and brought him out so much so powerful was peter's release that the bible says when they got to the gate that led to the city it opened on its own accord there is an investment of the power of god that can come around you your situations will not even wait for you to speak it will give way i'm telling you i wish i can hear a better amen it's true 
that before you walk out of this door or before this service is over the, 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 the forces that are responsible for that predicament or that problem will just naturally submit and leave you. The Bible says in Psalms 18, it says, Strangers shall hear my voice and obey. It said they shall all come out frightened from their hideouts. It said the foreigners will submit themselves to me. That's the kind of empowerment you will receive tonight. Four kinds of prayers to pray that command supernatural breakthrough. And I'm done tonight. Prayer number one is what I call the prayer of inquiry. The prayer of inquiry. I-N-Q-U-I-R-Y. Inquiry. Please listen attentively tonight because many of you in the days and the years ahead, you will need these things. Every time you are at a fix in your life, you are at a point where nothing seems to move whether in your business or in your job or in your marriage or in your spiritual life and what you need is a breakthrough prayer of inquiry the bible didn't say david went there and started crying the bible didn't say david went and said oh god come against the philistines for me no he went to god for answers the prayer of inquiry is a prayer for of answers the prayer that is desperately in need of answers this is the kind of prayer that reveals the mystery behind the situation one of the reasons why a lot of people don't experience deliverance is not because they don't pray it's because of the kind of prayer they pray every time a man is in need of deliverance it is because he's confronted with situations that are backed up by demonic mysteries what is a mystery a mystery is a hidden information a hidden truth is hidden to the man but that man cannot negate the reality and the impact of those of that mystery there are many people fighting what they don't understand are we together it's true there are many people who have done everything they can do around their finances in the last five ten years they have tried but it looks like it's a cycle they keep coming back to the same place brother and sister let me tell you the truth i don't need to sound too spiritual but this is the truth you are fighting with a mystery there is something beyond your understanding that is at work against you and that's the reason why the kingdom of god is the kingdom of mysteries he said to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom that there is a hidden wisdom a hidden information in god that can counter that mystery that is at work in your life but you need to lay hold of that mystery you need to lay hold of that, of that wisdom the prayer of inquiry reveals the mystery behind the situation proverbs chapter 11 verse 9 the Bible says in the B part, it says, True knowledge shall the righteous be delivered. Not through prayer and fasting, no. There is a place for that. Not through sowing of seed, there is a place for that. The first thing you will need to experience deliverance is knowledge. It's a true knowledge, the just, the righteous. True knowledge. And that's because knowledge is the root of deliverance. Whatever you will do that will command that deliverance came to you because of a knowledge and information that dropped from heaven to you. That's the reason why, see, I advise you as a believer, eh? I know it's good to receive from God, but be concerned about your spiritual life. Seek to grow. Seek to grow in God. Seek to know God so that when you are confronted with situations you don't just apply everything no you pray nothing happens you apply anointing oil nothing happens then you apply water what's the next one now then salt then handkerchief no knowledge are like keys every key is for a door when you get to the door you know the key for which door every key has the potential to open doors but not every key can open every door knowledge and that knowledge is gotten when you pray the prayer of inquiry that's what david did he went to god he didn't gather his people for a fight no he knew the people he was coming against the philistine army had resisted israel from the time they came into canaan 
you are talking about 400 years when you are fighting something that has been against your forefathers and your ancestors and they didn't succeed brother don't fight first go and pray the prayer of inquiry you need to there are questions you need to ask when you are confronted with something that is, that is orchestrated by witchcraft don't just go and start shouting prayer or look for a prayer book no go and pray the prayer of inquiry go and find out from god what is wrong david went to god he said shall i because all the people before me that has fought the philistines they were strong and they were mighty Saul was mighty had a mighty army but he didn't defeat them so david went to god every time you are in need of supernatural breakthrough you are confronted with oppositions around you look for a stronghold that stronghold can be your secret place huh that stronghold can be the voice over your life you don't understand that it's true that stronghold can be the voice over your life there are times when you have prayed and your prayer seems not to be enough you need a higher grace to step in and break the protocol when the axe that was borrowed by the by, by the prophet fell into the water what did he do he cried to elisha he said alas master he didn't cry to the axe he went to elisha was he elisha that borrowed the axe no and the bible says the man of god gave instructions and the axe was recovered your stronghold sometimes can be your man of god though. it can be your voice the voice over your life i remember a time towards the end of the year we had finished all our programs for the year and suddenly i fell sick suddenly and after a few medications and prayers nothing was working <laughs> and i remember this night it looked like i was going to die like i would give up i took my phone you know that at that time you need help and you need help fast no need for long grammar you know i, I thank god for the medical profession but sometimes they, they do too they are, their procedures are too long when there's an emergency they begin to clack the person take this take that what happened yet no 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 attend to the person i took my phone and sent a message to my spiritual father and he just sent four words in his message to me and it was like somebody walked into my room touched me and removed what was wrong with me and i was fine by the next day this was after three days of medication and nothing happened so your stronghold it can be your secret place it can be the voice that god has placed over your life because the battles that you are fighting that person has fought are we together if you are with me say amen so prayer number one the prayer of inquiry the prayer of inquiry is what will reveal strategies that will counter or remedy that situation it is in the prayer of inquiry that strategies are revealed to counter or to remedy the situation number two the prayer of faith prayers that command supernatural breakthrough the prayer of faith number two mark chapter 11 verse 24 the bible says whatever things you desire when you pray it says believe that you receive them and you shall what have them believe that you receive it's like this is the password this is the proof to know that you will surely get it if you pray believing he didn't say don't pray you can pray he said but only make sure you add the component of faith look at james chapter 5 verse 13 14 and 15 let me show you something there james chapter 5 verse 13 the prayer of faith he said is anyone among you suffering king james say afflicted let him do what let him do or talk to me go back there let him do what that's all and then there's a footstop there is anyone among you suffering let him do what pray he didn't say let him complain let him grumble let him blame his parents for not giving him a good start in life let him blame uh, 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 the, the organizations he applied to that didn't give him a job it, you know every time we are some there are people who what they do is to begin blaming others for their predicament no 
the first step to walking out of that situation is to take responsibility even if someone cost it for the reason why you are there take responsibility is there anyone afflicted among you let him do what pray next verse verse 14 is anyone among you sick let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord don't think it's the anointing that will do the work oh. look at what he says in the next verse he says and the prayer of faith will do what save the sick not the anointing oil that was just a point of contact because faith works with physical medium the bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for there must be a connection in the natural to agree with you to know that that which you are expecting in the supernatural will materialize in the natural there's always a contact point that's the reason why the end of your faith is an action you take you can't claim to have faith if there is no action supporting what you are hebrews 11 verse 6 he said for without faith it is impossible to please him if you go to god you must go with faith otherwise forget it he said for he that cometh to god must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them you know the meaning of that he is there first of all have the knowledge of whom this god is and you know who he is by the things he has done even if he has not done anything in your life there are billions of people all through history that he has done mighty things with in fact the names of god alone have you realized that no other spirit can call themselves that name as rebellious as satan is he cannot call his, himself one of the names of god because he doesn't have the capacity to stand in that shoe for instance he calls himself the man of war so just in case you are confronted with spiritual warfare in a season of your life god can arise as a man of war you know what a man of war is the only thing that excites that kind of a man is battle war on a normal day he's not smiling but when there is problem that's when he comes out you see every time you see military people passing with their vehicles you don't see them smiling do you ever see them smiling And you know they just they flag your car down and as they are flagging your car down they are looking at you to say just in case you want trouble in fact that's what we came for he said the lord of hosts is his name the lord of hosts i tell you the names that god gives himself nobody in the universe can attempt it's only god that can stand in that shoes and those names are not just bible names these are lifetime situations lifetime experiences that men in time past have gotten with god and they look for a name to support the revelation of god they saw he said thus said he in isaiah thus said he that maketh a way in the sea and a path among the mighty waters how that god can construct road in the sea in the space of two minutes is something we cannot understand so when you go to god you must go with this belief you must arm yourself with faith any prayer outside of faith is not prayer at all what makes your prayer prayer is because it was prayed out of faith and the prayer of faith shall save the sick the bible spoke in the next if you read the next verses in james chapter 5 verse 16 he says elijah was a man of like passions is he 16 now or 17 he was a man of like passions as we were he said but he prayed earnestly what separated him from us was that he prayed that there should be no rain never was there a time that a man prayed and withheld rain but somehow elijah knew that god was able to do the impossible he went and prayed and the bible says there was no rain for three and a half years you know that was very risky at least if it was for two days no problem so that if rain falls the third day eh, at least for three and a half years in each of these years there were rainy seasons but he shut down the heavens why the bible says he prayed in faith i'm telling you god 
till today god is still passionate about those who believe him i don't i've not seen god walk with somebody outside of faith no if god ever did a miracle or anything in your life outside of faith maybe that was an intervention of his mercy and you don't find that happening always but for you to see a man where every time he calls god answer there is a faith component there like it or not god is looking for men that would dare him step out of your generation and do things that nobody has done or your family put god to the test many times in my life i've dared god and i saw him came true for me many times many times number two the prayer of faith number three prayers that bring you into the presence of god another example of a prayer that commands supernatural breakthrough are prayers that brings you into the presence of god prayers that are capable of catapulting you into a dimension a reality of the presence of god the reason is because the presence of god the energy level in that place is not the same anywhere everywhere god is anything is possible he said where two or three are gathered in my name dear i am and where he is anything is possible are we together where he is anything he says for in your presence is the fullness of joy psalm 16 verse 11 and at your right hand there are what pleasures for how long forever you are my hiding place you always fill my heart with song of the deliverance wherever i am afraid i'll trust in I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. So if you need deliverance, where should you find yourself in? the presence of god psalms 31 he says in verse 20 he said thou hidest them in the secret place of your presence the presence of god is not only what makes you excited alone it's not only for the miraculous it's a place where god can hide you it's an address once you locate that place you become immune and impregnable to satanic attacks show me a man that understands the presence of god and has built it around his life i show you a man that the devil is handicapped about continually truth be told i'm telling you and you will see how that you can enter a vehicle planned or ready for accident and because of you that plan has to be suspended i'm telling you he said thou hidest them in the secret place if what you have around your life is not the presence of god maybe the bullets can get you even with bulletproof are you hearing what i'm saying do you know how secured the aso villa was during the time of general sani abacha do you know how se- those days it was not easy to come into power with coup you not only kill to get there you have to strengthen yourself to avert any other coup that will come that was one of nigeria's most powerful and brutal head of state i was told that that was the only man who hung the phone on the united states president and you know united states is like like world power and for almost eight years nigeria continued on that dictatorship and hardship but when god was ready god picked him how he was killed only god no we've heard all kinds of stories some say they gave him apple some said what but how how was it possible 
That was a man that was friends with people like Maman Gaddafi. You know Gaddafi? The late Gaddafi. In fact, one time Gaddafi visited him. You know, when two, two devils come together. How, what happened? What, how, where, how was there a breach? I'm telling the truth though. Bulletproof alone is not the assurance. Those of you who work in local governments, NGO and all of that, it's good to run into the bunker when they come. But that's not the assurance of your safety. A bullet can still find you there. The assurance of your safety is the presence of God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall do what? Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He said, and I will say of my God, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. He said, surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall trust. He said, you will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the noisome pestilence that walketh in darkness or the destruction that wasted at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand by your right hand but only with your eyes you will see and by god my god the presence of god so if you don't have the presence of god look for somebody that carries it that's why i say anywhere i am in just forget there will be no attack there Because see, let me tell you the truth. We are more than this physical look. All you are seeing is this body. This body, and God made it slim to fashion. You know why? We are living in an ultra slim. Isn't it? These kinds of television, even low currents, they will still be on. But that your big sharp television in those days. So which one is more powerful? It's not by physical size, though. Let me tell you. 